welcome to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It's Gem here and uh, this is one of my funny sort of little bit of everything videos apart from actual art which is weird. Uh, first of all there's a few things that I just want to update you on and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the gallery wall in a little bit more detail behind me and then I'm going to show you my happy mail that I've received over the last month or two. So first things first, uh, the channel is going pretty well. We seem to be uh, increasing in numbers still, which is great. So hello to all our new subscribers. If this is your first chatty video, you better go and get yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll, I'll keep it short, I promise. Uh, yes, yeah, so because of that, obviously, the um, the numbers are growing and we are not quite breaking even. And that's something I talked about in a previous update video about uh, how I was spending the money that has come from the monetized ads. So we're not quite there yet, but we are really, really close. And obviously, once we start breaking even, that means that I can start spending money on other stuff like more art supplies. <laughs> Who doesn't need more of them? Gosh. Uh, so that kind of brings me quite neatly on to talking about the ads. I had an email from someone who um, shall remain anonymous first and foremost. They weren't complaining. They were making an observation about the ads in the videos and saying that they were annoying and kind of like break the, like the atmosphere and the flow of the video. You have to understand that that is how YouTubers make money and it's a really important part of what we do. I don't expect you to sit through every single advert. I get that they're annoying. Remember that I watch YouTube as well and I find them really, really irritating. However, I have tried my best to balance out the, the aspect of having the opportunity to have monetized ads but also to try and minimize the annoyance of it for viewers and I've kind of come to a middle ground. Go and watch any of the big YouTubers and you will see that there are a buttload of adverts in their videos. The average intervals for videos to have ads in is actually every six minutes. Uh, that would drive me nuts, especially because some of our videos tend to be a lot longer. The likes of our drawing chats or colouring chats can be anything up to an hour. If you had an ad every six minutes, um, I can guarantee that I would have zero viewers. I mean, that there's nothing worse. The other thing that is a personal choice for me, um, and it's just a decision that I've made, is you will see in some videos that they have the banner ads, and those are the ones that come up at the bottom of the screen, and you've got to click the X to get rid of them. I absolutely detest those adverts and I find that really off-putting when I'm watching other YouTubers. So I made the decision not to have those ever. Um, so you, I, it's a, probably something that you don't actually notice as you jump between all your favourite YouTubers. But uh, you will notice in my videos now that they're never ever there. They are another revenue source. It's all part of the same kind of like advertising package, but I've chosen not to use them. So I hope that kind of goes a little bit um, towards explaining about the ad situation. I still have to make money at this, especially now that we're talking about, you know, the, the way that we're spending money. And I've been very transparent about where that money's going. So I just hope that you you can understand that a little bit more and realise that the, the number of ads that I have in my videos is actually very, very few compared to some other YouTubers. So I just wanted to address that. That's something that I thought was uh, quite important. The next thing is <laughs> where we are in terms of actually, you know, stuff in the cave. Uh, I have had like a technical nightmare for the past week. Everything that could possibly stopped working has stopped working, if that makes sense. And <laughs> it's just been absolutely horrendous. I have bought a camera. I am not using it just now. This is my mobile phone, which is the, the picture quality and stuff's quite good, can't complain. Uh, so I'm in the middle of trying to set up an overhead rig, which is going okay. So we've had to spend a little bit of money on that, but I said it in my previous video when I did the colour and chat, for those of you that don't watch the colour and chats, that it's money that I want to spend. It's not, oh my goodness, I'm spending all this money, but it's not like that. It's something that I want to do. I need to free up my phone because I use my phone for work for my, my, prop, my proper job. So it's kind of important that I did something. Uh, I, I've not picked the, the cheapest way to do things, but after doing a lot of research, watching a lot of YouTube videos, 
and just trying to figure stuff out. I think I have the answer, so I will keep you posted on that. What I am hoping is that it's going to give us a uh, slightly better video quality, although I'm not sure now after using my phone. Uh, and I'm hoping that it will give us better audio quality as well. So that's kind of something that's, it's not a necessity, but it might make your, your viewing slightly more pleasurable. Who knows? The next exciting thing that's going to happen, hopefully, not entirely sure if it is or it isn't, uh, we're going to have a giveaway at two and a half thousand subscribers. We are pretty close now. We're, you know, we've got maybe a couple of weeks to go. But uh, tell your friends, if you have arty friends or people that like to listen to Scottish accents, because that seems to be a thing, then get them to come over and subscribe and then we can have a giveaway and, uh, you know, just have a little bit of fun in a celebratory video because we haven't had one for a while. I do have some nice things to give away, so it is definitely worthwhile once we get to two and a half K. Okay, I'm just consulting. I've got a little list here, as usual, my post-it notes. Uh, coffee fund, coffee fund. We are on our second coffee funded video set and uh, that's going to be continuing over the course of the next week or so. We're actually quite close to the next coffee fund target as well. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone who has donated, not just those that have taken things from the stash, but there are people who have donated just out of the goodness of their heart. And that is, that is it's just the nicest thing ever. And it's, it's it's such good fun. I'm really enjoying this because I literally have no control over what's happening other than creating the art. Uh, it's you guys that donate the money, so I have nothing to do with that. It's you guys that pick what you want me to do. All I do is execute it, and there's something really, really fun about that. So uh, especially to the people that have donated regularly, I want to say a very special thank you because it's it's beyond generous and it makes me feel like what I'm doing is really worthwhile. So thank you ever, 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 ever so much. I really, really appreciate it. And it's it's just amazing fun. I'm really, really enjoying the coffee videos. Okay, uh, anyway, next thing. Uh, the last thing is about comments. The As the channel is continuing to grow, it's getting harder and harder for me to keep track of all of your comments. And the way that YouTube have their notification system set up, it's not great. And I have noticed that just recently I am starting to miss an odd comment here and there. And especially the likes of the, the more popular videos like the scroller box videos, there's, you know, there's quite a number of comments there. I love sitting reading comments. It's one of my favourite things to do and I love the interaction that we've got. And, you know, I've always tried to sort of foster this nice community feel here on this channel. And I try and involve you guys in things as much as possible. So the comments are something that's really important to me. But I just want you to know that if I, if I don't respond to your comment either by replying, liking or hearting it, I'm not ignoring you. I've maybe just missed it. One of the things that I have decided to do from this point to kind of like help alleviate that a little bit is if someone asks a question that is actually answered in the video, I am not going to reply to those comments anymore. I spend the time filming the video, making the content and editing it. I don't want to have to spend the time answering a comment of something that is covered in a video. And it's purely a time saving exercise. So if you ask a question and you don't get a response from me, you need to sit and watch the video from start to end and find out where the answer is because I can guarantee you it will be in there. Now that's not to say that everyone else in the community, if someone does ask a question, and if you know the answer to the question, please everybody else feel free to help that person out. But I've just got to manage my time as effectively as possible and I'm gonna have to start doing things like this as time goes on if I'm still going to be able to participate and respond the way that I'm doing just now. So that's just something to think about. And I'm all for other people answering someone's question. It's different if you don't understand my pronunciation. Uh, that's quite a common thing. I had somebody ask about um, the title of a colouring book not that long ago. And I think that person asked because they were trying to figure out how to spell it, to search for it. That's a different thing. That's not what I'm talking about. But if I if say I've tried something out and I've added water to it to see what's happening and it turns out to be a disaster in the video, if someone then asks in the you know in the comments what happens when you add water, I'm not gonna answer that question because it's in the video. The other thing as well that's been kind of sparked by a, a recent comment is that 
I want everyone to feel safe and happy and not feel as if they can't give their opinion. I openly encourage debate as long as it is kept adult and sensible and I want everyone to be able to express their opinions and you know back and forth with each other because that's what a community is all about. If at any point anyone feels unsafe or there has been an unsavoury comment I am relying on you guys to to flag that up to me because as I said I'm not catching every comment now. I do do my best and I will watch out for things like that because I don't want anyone feeling as if they're being picked on or you know unjustly attacked or anything like that and I definitely will not put up with any trolling that's just goes without saying so if you see something like that that's maybe just even if it's like an abrasive comment or something like that I would really appreciate you getting in contact with me and letting me know there are certain words that uh, like I have like a filter um, for those of you that don't know how it works I have a comments filter so any obscenities and uh, you know like sort of touchy subject words they will flag up and I can review the comment but and approve it or I can bin it so um, I'm kind of asking you guys this is a really long-winded way of saying if you see something that's a bit off a bit unsavory or somebody being really unreasonable please get in touch with me and let me know just in case I don't see it because I want everybody to enjoy being here and I want everyone to feel that they can comment and join in discussions that go on in the comment section without fear of, uh, you know, someone turning around and, you know, kind of like laying into them. So that's really important too. It has to be a safe environment and the cave has always been a happy place and it is going to remain a happy place because there's so much stuff going on everywhere else. You want to have somewhere to come to have fun and that's the whole point of this channel is to have fun. It's, I knew I would have to have this conversation at some point um, and it's actually taken a lot longer than I thought it would but I just want you all to be aware of that and you know look out for each other because at the end of the day we're all friends here so that would be really awesome if you could do that too. Okay so that's kind of enough rambling we're going to head over to the gallery wall now and then after that we can take a look at the happy mail. Off we go. So here's the gallery wall as you normally see it. In fact, I don't even think you actually see it in that sort of wide shot. But I just wanted to give you a quick tour and show you what is on the gallery wall color currently. Currently, So starting here, this some of you will recognise from the July scroller box. And that was my little oil painting on our teeny weeny canvas. And I just thought, why not stick it on the wall? Up here, I try not to get the reflection in from outside. This is pretty awesome. This was sent to me by Mike, who is one of our viewers, and he likes to draw on mail envelopes with Posca pens. And I did ask him if I could print it off and put it in a frame. So there we go. And as you can see, he's got quite a sort of funny and eclectic style and it's really really funny because there's little dudes peeping out and behind the notes and everything I really like it, it really really spoke to me. Moving on over we have uh, one from our recent video from Crayola Skies this is her original uh, ger uh, germade yes or mergeraf whatever you want to call it and um, so that's definitely deserved of a place on the, the gallery wall. Up here this is a scan of a graphite drawing I did of Bayek of Siwa, who is from the Assassin's Creed video game franchise. Uh, this is a really bad copy. Um, that was just a straight scan, but I wanted to put it up at the time and I didn't have access to any digital uh, software like Photoshop or anything. Down here, this was my first proper graphite drawing and this is Mist. She was my original sheepdog and uh, she sadly passed away um, a year or so ago, uh, so I felt that was one of the reasons I really wanted to learn to draw in graphite was to draw her. So obviously I'm very proud of this drawing and yes, she only had one eye. It is really difficult to draw a non-eye <laughs> where there's supposed to be an eye, but I think I did a good job of, of capturing that. Anyway, I miss her. This was a frame that I picked up from our local charity shop and I just really liked the art in it. So this is the original artist and uh, I just thought it was pretty, so I thought I'd keep it there. Up here, this, I'm sure this is a familiar face to you, this is obviously a portrait of Wu and Mr Gem had this done when she was a lot younger so this is nothing to do with me but I just really like the frame and it's a really good likeness of her so I like having animals uh, drawn and painted and things so she deserved a place on the wall too. 
Now this is where things start to get a bit more interesting. Moving over here, this little chap up here, this is uh, Gregory Grayscale as named by Daria. Now Daria actually posted this to me and uh, I just absolutely love it. This is from a New Creations colouring book Tropical by uh, Teresa Davis. So if you want to check out her colouring book you can do and Daria has coloured this with polychromos pencils and I think you'll agree it's absolutely adorable. So Gregory is now taking pride of place up on the wall. This, uh, this image here, I'm trying to remove the reflection, this image here, uh, this was a video that I did on Posca pen and it was just having a little bit of fun and I like it because it's colourful, it's you know it's just it's something a bit more, um, a bit less serious. And moving over, now <laughs> this is not in a frame because it's laminated which also makes it really shiny and Yvonne sent this to me in my PO box and she has called him Aussie and this is from Lost Ocean by Johanna Basford. Now Yvonne actually followed a tutorial or a colour along, I'm not sure which, by Emily Illustrator who is a, a prolific colourist on YouTube so you can check out her channel too, I shall link that in the description for you and as you can see she's done a sterling job so Aussie is now up on the wall also. Lastly, up here, this is just one of my favourite watercolours that I've done recently, I just really like the colours in it so I thought that was worthwhile sticking it in a frame too. Now down here I have been back to the charity shop and as you can see I have lots of frames sitting here so if you would like to send me some artwork and see it up on the gallery wall you can either email it to me or you can send it to our PO box which is in the description of every video and I love getting things in the mail so that would be absolutely awesome. Okay that's it for now guys so let's just uh, call it a do at that. Right. <laughs> This has just appeared from the P.O. box, so I thought I would just film it now. Ow! <laughs> I don't know what, this has obviously burst and Royal Mail have packaged it back up, so that's, that's nice of them. Thanks Royal Mail. Somebody's used a very nice purple pen here. <laughs> this smells amazing, whatever is in this envelope <laughs> smells amazing. What have we got? We've got a letter with another wax seal on it. Oy. <laughs> These are the Tetley variety. They are a bit cheaper than the Twinings by about one pound. And I've got a little heart shaped paper clip as well in my favourite colour. Oh, that's what smells amazing. Oh, wow. Raspberry and cranberry and orange and peach. Oh, I wish you guys could smell that. Oh, well, this is amazing. Thank you very much. Now, I'm not going to read this out loud. I don't want to break this wax seal because it's so pretty. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to read this out loud just in case there's anything private in it. Oh, nice paper as well. I love letters. I will make sure I get permission before I mention them. But this is from Cal and she is Magical82 on YouTube. So if you see her name popping up in the comments and she says, Hiya Gem, I know how much you like your tea. So I thought you may like to try these cold fusions as I mentioned a comment in the other week. Keep arting, Cal. Thank you so much. That is absolutely lovely. I might just leave these envelopes sort of casually lying about the cave because they smell brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cal. That is amazing. I really appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to bust this open and see what happens. I have got Jack Russell. Where she's jumping up on me because she's desperate. She can obviously smell the tea. And she's like desperate to see what it is. I'm going to put the, the tea envelopes on the floor <laughs> and see what happens. What's that way? Oh, what do they smell of? Oh, she likes that. Okay. There is a big sticker on this that says Fragile Handle with Care. Hmm. Oh, good grief. No, no, Pippi, that's not for eating. Pip's now trying to eat the tea envelopes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's popped open at the top. Good grief, what is in here? Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, someone actually contacted me about this again. I'm going to make sure it's okay to mention her name before uh, before I use this footage for anything. But this package has come from Yvonne. She had a massive stash of extra pencils and she was so generous in letting me have some of them. Oh, this is like a... Oh my goodness, there's tons of stuff in here. Yvonne, I am going to have words with you. <laughs> God, there's 
even more in here. Jeez, oh, this is a lot of pencils. My, 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 look at all these pencils. Postcard colouring book, floral still life. <gasps> oh, look at these. Oh, these are amazing. These are going to be so much fun to paint or pencil. I see that uh, she started some of them and we could easily carry that on. And, oh, this is super pretty. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. We're, we're definitely doing a video with these. These are amazing. What else is in here? Good grief. Bright ideas, 10 neon coloured pencils. Now, this is, oh, look at these. Wowee, solar flare, electric blue. They've got some awesome names as well. Flaming fuchsia. Oh, these are cool. That's something that I've always wondered about is how, what to do with neon pencils. Maybe we should try and do an entire drawing with just neon colours because there's some neon colours in the Prismacolor pencils as well. So that might be quite interesting. Oh, this is another lovely letter. Dear Gem, here are the spare pencils I promised you. Honestly, never realised how many I had. Feel free to use them in your brilliant videos. I included a few other bits, like the watercolour paper. You can keep them or sell them or pass them on up to you. Also thought you might like my latest colouring, Aussie from Lost Ocean. Love your channel and watch every video you do. Best wishes, Yvonne. Oh, we're not finished. Oh my goodness. Oh, what's that? <laughs> it's over here. Oh, Statler metallic markers. Well, that's fun as well. Yvonne, thank you so much. That is amazing. You are, you are one special, special lady. Good grief. Okay, so the next thing that has come in the P.O. box is this bag from Jo, who again is one of our regular viewers. And she has kindly sent me some paper that she has quite a lot of. And she has, well, she sent me this little sketchbook and it's sparkly. It is really, really nice. And the paper quality is really good in it as well. So that's really nice. Thank you so much for that, Jo. But more excitingly, she sent me a range of different craft papers and she's cut it into various sizes for me. So she's cut some little bits like this and we have some blue and we have like a cream colour. And she sent me larger pieces as well. So I'm just going to move this bag out of the way. There's this sort of stripy patterned paper and I do believe that you get this in pads sometimes. You know, it comes in like blocks. And I know that uh, card makers, paper crafters use stuff like this all the time. This is not something I'm familiar with. So I think that we need to do something really funky with this and make a really cool artwork. When I see this, it makes me think about using Posca pens. I don't really know what, like in what capacity, but I'm really inspired by this. And there's some lovely pattern sheets here. So we'll definitely use these for a video at some stage. And it's a nice big square format so that would be really nice to frame or something like that she's also sent me bigger sheets in various colors and this is the same paper as the the little rectangles like this and she sent me quite a lot of it in various shades i quite like this uh, this turquoisey color because it's almost green obviously so I would like to do some sort of art with these as well, but there is quite a chunk of this paper. So I'm thinking that maybe once I've done some artwork with it, whatever's left, I could put in the cave stash if anybody would like to, to have a go at something similar or maybe other people use them for paper crafts if some of you are crafty people. It's something that's really nice and easy and cheap to post as well because it's flat. So I think I'm going to add some of this to the cave stash, but not until I've, I've had a go myself. <laughs> so, Joe, thank you very much once again. That was really, really kind of you. So nice of you to do it. And we will definitely, definitely make good use of all of this. And I shall add it to my list of videos that I really need to make. Okay, next on the list. And this one was a complete surprise and uh, it, it almost made me cry a little bit. Cal, again, thank you so much for this. And this was one of these ones where I saw the, the Amazon man coming up the driveway and I was like, I haven't ordered anything, what's going on? And she sent me this. Now there's a bit of a story behind this because I have wanted this book for such a long time. And I, some of you will know that I've stopped buying colouring books for the moment because I really don't have as much time as I used to to colour. But this book is just absolutely stunning. And it's it's so unique, it's so different, and it's just a really high quality book. And this is one of these books where even if I never coloured in it, then 
I would be happy still to have it because it's a book that I would like to to flick through and keep and just to have but the pictures in it are lovely like stuff like this is just like oh it's right up my alley and it's so I don't know it's just it's just beautiful I love it I love it so much so I just want to thank you so much Cal because it's it's a very unique book and I really like things like that but this guys this book's not cheap so thank you so much for your generosity as well Cal honestly and I mean that from the very bottom of my being because this is one of these books that I really really wanted to buy even though I promised myself I wasn't going to buy any more colouring books so I think we will have to do at least one or two videos on this as well last but certainly not least I received a letter in my PO box and as you know, letters are absolutely one of my favourite things. And inside the letter was this. No problema. And it is a sticker. It's actually two stickers. I absolutely thought I was going to die laughing when I saw this. And this has come from Daria. Uh, if any of you read the comment section, you'll know that Daria is one of my serial commenters, which uh, I absolutely love. So, um, yeah, I'm just absolutely in love with this. Some of you will know that we do have llamas on the farm. I like to draw llamas. I have a thing about camelids. I have no idea why. And on the front of my sketchbook, I have the Dalai Lama get it yeah so I, i've kind of got a thing about about, about llama puns as well because i've got this one as well it is a llama doing yoga llama stay <laughs> so uh, this it's these kind of things guys i mean that i appreciate this so much because it's very personal daria's obviously thought a lot about this and you know that is such a thoughtful gesture and it, it honestly i thought i was going to die laughing and i showed it to mr gem and he even he found it funny and he does not find silly things funny so well done daria you've definitely pinned down the sense of humor but i'm going to keep this and i think i'm going to have all of my sketchbook with a llama sticker on the front of it from now on so my next sketchbook is going to have this on the front of it and I quite like that the colour color scheme is going to kind of continue on as well. Well, guys, there you go. That was interesting for a sort of impromptu filming, wasn't it? <laughs> I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. You can check out some more here if you're looking for other stuff to watch and we shall see you next time back in the cave. Bye for now.